Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice here with a getting started video on the new mod Intangible. This is made by Emanif, the same mod creator who's also made Witchery. So, to get started, we're going to end up needing some bones. So, find yourself some skeletons and get some bones. So I have a few here that are just waiting for me. Once you've got some bones, you're going to want to find a volunteer, like this chicken here. And let me get out of uh, creative mode here, and you'll want to get the killing blow on an entity. You'll end up getting that discovery there, a soul bone. As you can see here, it's a bit more yellowish in color. Anytime that you end up uh, killing an entity with a bone, a uh, regular, you know, bone, then it should turn into a soul bone. Uh, once you get a few of those, which uh, I'll end up getting a few here in a moment, you'll end up then wanting to make sure that you mine some lapis lazuli ore, as I will do here. And you're going to need access to some water, preferably on top of stone, as you see here. So I am going to be right back. So now that I've spawned myself in some soul bones and I have uh, the lapis lazuli I was talking about, I have stone beneath some water. Now you can just uh, bucket some in place and you should be fine. Uh, otherwise you can, you know, just find yourself some water somewhere, but it's best if it's uh, surrounded by something to start with, uh, just so that it uh, does not end up pouring the contents around. You then toss a piece of lapis and one of the uh, newly obtained soul bones in the water. You'll start seeing bubbles forming, as you see there. You should do this with uh, as many as you can to start with, just to uh, get yourself going in this mod, as this will take a bit of time in order to uh, get things uh, started at the very beginning. So, as you notice, they all are starting to bubble. Uh, over time, uh, one of them will as they progress, will eventually turn into a blue crystal cluster. And it will just start out as this little tiny blue mass, uh, and they do tend to grow at almost double the rate on stone instead of grass or dirt. Now to start with, obviously it's got to be underwater, uh, but later on once you obtain the results from your uh, efforts, you're able to reproduce that and uh, re plant it on other surfaces, uh, vertical, horizontal, and so on. Uh, so hopefully this will end up crystallizing shortly. There we go. And you can see here we now have a blue crystal from Intangible growing on this stone. Now once that's happened, you should clear away any outside uh, surrounding it. There we go. They're all uh, slowly turning over. And I have a torch here just for lighting and because I'm also in a winter biome so that the water does not uh, freeze as soon as I end up doing this. But um, you should clear away at least the, uh, the dirt on the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, uh, on the uh, blocks so that uh, they can grow faster. That is the uh, best way to go because it does take a while. It takes uh, on average about one to three Minecraft days for uh, one of these to end up growing to its full size. And over time, it will end up growing into these, which I have over here. And you notice that they're all kind of slightly different shades. Some are lighter blue, some are darker blue. Those that are colorblind, you may or may not notice. I'm not really sure. But uh, And you'll get the occasional rare one that has a bit of yellow coming off of it. Now it does say blue crystal on my little uh, tool tip, but when you break this, you should be getting a, uh, a yellow crystal. So once you end up getting these things, when you right click on it, you should hear uh, the little ting there. And that means that it is ready and done growing and uh, you can harvest it. Now, before I do, I'll show you one quick uh, item there. And actually, I still have some lapis. Let me get some uh, uh, bone meal just to uh, show as well. But if I add some lapis, it will actually end up changing it to the color blue. As you notice, different shades. If I add the bone meal, 
it will change it more white. So, and it, this works with uh, other dyes as well. You can use it with uh, reds and so on. You can even mix them afterwards and, uh, you know, make a lighter blue by uh, constantly going back and forth or uh, tinting them back uh, darker and so on. It's a lot of fun. You can make it aesthetic, but uh, it won't change the results of what you get from the uh, crystal. So, there we go. We've discovered a crystal. And this does take some time. If you notice, the other ones haven't actually even uh, moved. So, like I said, it takes about one to three uh, Minecraft days. Oops, let's uh, put a torch down there so that, that hopefully will end up uh, melting. Um, but uh, if you end up breaking this one here, I should get a yellow crystal, which can be very good. Now, once you get these crystals, I recommend, uh, obviously, your first one that you get, you're only going to get one from uh, those that you end up growing like this. Once you're done, though, I recommend that you replant it like this on another piece of stone. You can even plant them on a uh, vertical surface like so, and it will end up growing just as fast. And it's best if you do have open air around it, so if you crystal the, or cluster them together, they're not going to grow quite as fast. Now obviously if you're doing it for aesthetics, it'll just take a little longer, but they can grow just fine next to each other if you want, for instance. Now I do have some more because I can just spawn them in, so not to worry. There we go. Now once you have your blue crystal, we are going to be able to use this to make essentially the intangible instruction manual. So let's get the rest of the ingredients here. One thing of note, if you have started growing one of these uh, crystal clusters with the bucket of water, lapis, and soul bone, and you mine it up before it's mature, you get nothing. But if you did plant one with one of your little blue crystals, allow me to actually eliminate those so that you don't see it anymore, you will get it back. So just a little something that you uh, know there, but if you wait for it to grow to its maturity, there's a chance that you'll actually end up getting some more from it. So therefore you shouldn't have to uh, constantly farm lapis and soul bones all the time. You can actually use them to reproduce each other and so on. But uh, let's get into making what we need to do here. We're going to make the casing first, which is made just like this. You get an iron casing. Put that here, the piston and a couple of redstone. Sorry about that. And you get a circuit stamper. Now this is a really cool device. It's actually uh, just another version of a crafting table. The biggest difference being that it actually requires a redstone signal in order to function. So I'm going to place it right here. Also, I'm going to grab myself a lever here. Let's just grab one for now. And we'll put it down next to it and you'll see it opens and closes. But it makes a little snap noise. When I flick that lever, that means that the uh, recipe in it, which there isn't one, is actually going to uh, not function properly. Now, how this works is, this is like a 2x2 two two crafting grid instead of a 3x3. Three three. Essentially, I right-click here with the items I want to put in. Now, if I right-click twice, it will take the entire stack of whatever is currently uh, highlighted in my inventory. So if I actually split this stone in half, and I right-click on this uh, stone here, it will actually add it to 31 like so. And I can do that over here. Now if I want it back, I just right click and it's not a problem. So I can actually take all these back. I can make space on my toolbar here, spread them out evenly, and I can actually end up putting them all in like so. Now what, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is actually one of the valid recipes, a whole bunch of smooth stone. And once I pull the lever, it actually kicks out four items. You then can right click the item and I've got four stone rings. These will be used a little bit later, but for now I'm just using it to uh, show off the circuit stamper. So I can actually quickly produce these if I want to and uh, end up getting them all back. Well, not all back, but you get the idea. I can then clear out all these items here. Whoops. <laughs> Gotta make sure I don't keep right clicking with the same item. And uh, what we're gonna do next is actually a blue crystal, soul bones, and a piece of redstone should do the trick. Once I flip this, we get ourselves the knowledge gem. Now this is actually this is a gem of a book here. It's actually a, a instruction manual that you don't have to uh, always have to have um, 
breaking away from your inventory. You, know, you see, I can actually walk away from it, uh, go into this, craft something, come back, and it's still open. So you don't have to worry about that. If I click on something and then I close it, I can actually open it. It'll be right back on the page I was on. Plus, I can actually have two of these in the world. But if I click on one, it'll happen on both. Um, and if there is another player and they're looking at this, it will actually display the image that they last looked at on here. And if they've never looked at it, then they'll probably end up seeing the uh, original screen here on Matters Incorporeal. So this is actually all you really need in this, ma in this uh, mod in order to progress. Uh, you don't actually have to watch this video any further, but I'm glad that you are. So we're going to try and walk you through the basics of intangible here. Now that you actually have blue crystals, there's a little bit more that you can do with them. A little unexpected behavior here. Let's, uh, let's make some armor. That's right, you can actually make armor out of the blue crystals. Now, there's a big bonus and there's a big negative to this. Uh, the uh, plus side is it's diamond level protection. And uh, besides the fact that it takes a while, and it uh, it actually is really awesome looking. <laughs> it looks like I'm covered in uh, ice cubes. Um, but uh, it does have a bigger downside than just waiting for these things to grow. And that is that the uh, durability on these is really, really terrible. See, great protection, terrible durability. You could probably end up breaking these in about five to ten hits. So... Uh, Wear them with caution if you decide to make them. But it can always be something fun you can wear. Um, you could always put some protection on it. Maybe you can find a repair enchant that might work for you uh, with another mod. But uh, at the very least, you can have some diamond level protection with uh, just a little bit of lapis and some soul bones. With your soul gem, you should be able to actually just right click on it and you can go back to the page you're on materials crystal you can page through things read through it it's very very comprehensive and very helpful uh, i do recommend every time you get a new discovery you go back to your soul gem and you end up uh, going through all the notes again you'll probably end up finding it's a little bit more organized and you've got a little bit more to uh, read and learn about so we've made the circuit stamper we made the knowledge gem next we're going to make a bellows and a blow mold the bellows is made with just some oak wood planks, an iron casing, and a couple pieces of leather. So as you see, just grab one of these, and you've got this really nifty little bellows that you can place in the world. Now, you can actually... <laughs> it also makes a really uh, satisfying noise to it. If you just right-click it once, it makes a little sound and goes down a little bit. If you just hold the uh, right-click button, you will constantly keep pumping it down, and it will end up getting a full blast out of it. So you can actually have uh, items in front of it and it will <laughs> blow them as you progressively uh, press the uh, bellows down as well, which is just kind of a, a well, I'll say nifty type uh, deal, but its uh, true purpose is to help a furnace and a, uh, oh, what was it called again? The blow mold. So with the bellows hooked up to a furnace, if I were to put coal in with some wood, you'd see it just slowly ends up doing this. Nothing really spectacular, but you can end up automating this. With some simple repeaters and some redstone, you can actually have this thing automatically boost your production. Now each one of these bellows that you end up uh, adding to a furnace will increase its uh, speed by about 25%. So if you have four of them around it that are constantly uh, running, you can increase the speed of a furnace by, well, about 100%. Uh, once you uh, end up attaching those, they are also slightly more fuel efficient. So you'll end up uh, spending less coal in the long run by using these, provided that they are uh, automated. So pretty cool. With six stone, and a single dropper, you can make yourself a blow mold. Now this is actually a really neat and uh, pretty cool item as well. Now, it looks just like a regular, uh, well, stone version of a cauldron, which really that kind of is what it is. Uh, so let me grab a bucket here and some crystals. And here's uh, some things you can do with it. So if you find yourself some lava, that's going to be a good starting point. Get yourself some blue crystals and you can actually toss them into the lava. 
and they will, even if you don't see it rendering like this, like it bounces off or disappears, give it a moment and it'll turn into a blue molten blue crystal. Now you could even toss this in amongst uh, a field of lava, like there you go. But wait a second and there you go. It actually shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. And the best part about it is that uh, even if there's nothing in its way, it actually is not a flowing block. It will stay where it's at. So, uh, another item. You can actually toss glass into lava and it should turn into molten glass, which we can use a little bit later. And of course, that yellow crystal that we have, we could use that for many things as well. One of which is to toss it in and make some molten yellow crystal. Just like that. So, first we're going to grab the blue crystal though. Toss it into the blow mold and we have ourselves molten blue crystal in the blow mold. Well, what do we do with it from there? Well, we actually take a break from it for a second and we decide to make ourselves some molds to use with it. Now each of these essentially needs uh, stone and sand. Uh, it can be red sand, it can be regular sand, um, not a problem. So if I end up transferring the items, here we go, I've got a funnel mold. Uh, should only need one of each of these, uh, whoops, <laughs> which I'm spawning them into myself here. So I will end up doing these. Uh, also there's gem molds, glass bottle molds, and glass pane molds. Now each of these, I will actually show you the recipe of each. The decanter is as such. The splitter is a T-shape of stone. The gourd is uh, just a couple of vertical lines on either side of sand. Spiral mold is an H shape, and the gem mold is an X shape. Uh, plus the glass bottle, of course, is a, a kind of a, a diamond shape, and the glass pane is just a single inverted version of the funnel, as you see here. Now you'll only need one of these uh, so that you can actually, uh, you can reuse them. And uh, to give an example, I actually will need one funnel mold. Uh, you shouldn't need more than one funnel. Now if you look you can actually see the little blue inside there so that's working just as intended. But we're gonna need a bellows. Now there's no need to automate this one as much unless you really really want to. Uh, I find that just uh, right clicking works just fine for this purpose. But you just do this and when you hear the ding then you've got yourself a funnel. And you can see here it's actually a funnel is in my inventory. Now the good thing about these is that uh, you place them down in the world and even if you punch it with your hand, it doesn't break. You can pick it back up and reuse it again. You will only ever need one funnel and, uh, unless you end up uh, breaking it or destroying it in some accidental way. Uh, but otherwise you can, uh, I recommend that the other uh, molds, the uh, gourd, the spiral, the decanter, uh, and the splitter, you make yourselves four each of those uh, different uh, glassware items. Now, you see here that there is uh, nothing inside at the moment. Now, I'm going to remove that mold. We're going to put a different one on here, the decanter. And then I'm going to grab my bucket and get another bucket of blue, molten blue crystal. Now, while that's on there, you can actually still refill it. So let me get to a point where you can see. There we go. And if I right click, it fills it up and it's inside. So whether the uh, mold is on top or not, which you can just right click and uh, take the bucket back out, or you can, uh, with an empty hand, right click and take the mold off. Not a problem. Then you just use your uh, bellows again and you can make yourself a decanter. Just like that. So I'm gonna make myself a bunch of these, but uh, before I do, I'm going to show you the uh, glass bottle mold and show you how that can be useful. Let me grab an empty bucket and some of this here, the molten glass. Pour that in, put your mold on top, and with one piece of glass and one lava source block, you can make yourself quite a bit of glass bottles. And I get six glass bottles. With the uh, glass pane mold, you end up getting five. Uh, glass panes, which is really cool. You know, if lava is not too bad of a uh, resource or you've got a pool of it nearby or something, feel free to use that. Though I think you'll probably end up using quite a bit of it, making yourself uh, the uh, other items that we'll be needing. So I'll be right back. 
So now that I have all these uh, glassware items, what are we going to do with them? Well, we're going to hook them up to a cage that's going to be made from soul bones. So you get yourself a bunch more soul bones. And don't worry, uh, you can just keep the uh, amount of soul bones you need minimal for now. I will show you a way to uh, mass produce these uh, not too far along the line. So I recommend you, you don't have to run around chasing for uh, soul bones all the time, you know, trying to get stacks by killing all sorts of uh, enemies. Just get yourself maybe a half a stack to start with and uh, you should be good to go. So I'm going to actually hook this up right here. And you can see we have a bone cage. This here, just right click it, it opens and closes. Uh, it's also a good idea to uh, get yourself a couple of stone with a pressure plate in the front. Put that down so that as anything comes up to it, it will snap shut. Now if there is something in front of this that is not a player, uh, it, and you right click on here, by closing it, it will actually suck in whatever uh, entity is in front of it, provided that it possibly can go inside. So let me get a bit of uh, something here for this little sheepy, and we'll see if we can get him to uh, help us out. All right, here we go, little guy. Just need you. There we go. He got close enough. Now the thing is, if I accidentally step on there, I'll let him back out again, but then you can always snap it shut. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is we add the funnel. That is always the first item on here. And then four of any of the other ones. I'm just going to do four uh, of these uh, spirals for now. And remember, whatever I end up doing here for these is not going to be the same for you unless you're using the exact same world seed that I am, which is, uh, I have to say, relatively unlikely. Every time that you uh, are starting up any kind of new uh, Minecraft world, these are going to change out for what we're trying to discover right now. So do not take this as the correct method for discovering what we're about to do. Now, I will need a lever. Let me grab one here. I'll leave that one. I'll just get one out of here. And a redstone signal is required. You notice the color that this funnel is now? Well, watch what happens when I end up flicking the switch. It turned a little bit lighter, and the next one actually turned darker. Uh, therefore, this one turned kind of a greenish hue, kind of reddish hue, and uh, that means that this is actually the wrong type to be here. So let me end up getting that, and we'll try the next one in the list, and then we will end up giving it another go. Obviously, that one was wrong too, so it's just a little mini game for you to figure this out. Now, once you get this, uh, it won't be too bad. So don't end up uh, getting frustrated. Oh, there we go. I got one of them. So, and we try the next one. And there we go. Discovery souls, discovery benign soul, which means this sheep here has a benign soul which it sounds kind of insulting, but, well, it's it's a sheep. Um, pigs, they'll also have a benign soul. Chickens, they'll have a benign soul, and so on. Now, there are different kinds of souls, and if you uh, consult your knowledge gem here, it will actually let you know what souls you have actually uh, discovered. So let's see here. Souls, types of souls, it says benign which it explains in there what that's about. Uh, there are ways of storing souls, extracting souls, and directing souls, which is what we're actually going to get into next.